So the name of this recording is How to Detach from Your Thoughts. And I want to spend a few minutes covering this idea because if you truly embrace it, I believe it could potentially be life-changing. Grasping it has actually transformed the lives of many people over the years. It certainly did mine years ago. So if you're hearing about this concept for the first time, it definitely could have a powerful influence on you. But even if you heard it before, and you probably have, I want to give it a spin that I think will make it more impactful and useful in your daily life. So there are some phrases you've probably heard before, especially if you have pursued a meditation practice or you've done any research into mindfulness, you'll often hear the teacher or the author say, be the observer of your thoughts. Or they'll say something like, you are not your thoughts, you're the observer of your thoughts. Or something along the lines of, do your best to detach from your thoughts. I've even used these phrases in many of my own meditation recordings. Now, I'm familiar with this concept. I have been for decades now, so maybe I just take it a little bit for granted, at least in my own life. But I do realize for many people, especially of those maybe coming across this concept for the first time, it's confusing. It's hard for many people to grasp. What do you mean, I am not my thoughts? The thoughts are emanating from my mind. They've got to be coming from me. It's obviously an extension of who I am and what I think and, and how I show up in the world. And I used to think the same way, especially when I was much younger. But even to this day, I get caught up in thinking my thoughts are reality when in fact they're just a perception of reality. So let me explain how I discovered this in my own life. So when I was younger, like actually a teenager in high school, like a lot of people that age, I had a lot of issues with self-worth and self-confidence. I stuttered a bit and was often uncomfortable in social situations. And like a lot of people who just don't know any better, I thought that's just who I am. I labeled myself and identified myself as I'm not confident, I'm not worthy. I would observe other people I admired and say, man, I wish I had those skills. I'm probably never going to have those qualities and be able to live that kind of unhindered life. And during one particular period when I was just having a rough time, I believe it was in my junior year of high school, my friend Gary gave me a book by Wayne Dyer called Your Erroneous Zones. Now, this was back in the 70s, and that was Wayne's very first popular book that put him on the map. And it was the first self-help type of book that I ever read. There weren't a whole lot of them out. I guess Think and Grow Rich had been out for a long time. And there were others, but I had never really been exposed to them. So this was my first glimpse into this type of thinking. And thank God to my friend Gary and to Wayne Dyer, who I've followed ever since then, he published a ton of books and resources over the decades and sadly passed away about five years ago. But what this first book that I was exposed to made me aware of was that I was not my thoughts. Yes, I was thinking them, but I can actually choose what thoughts I think. It made me aware of the importance of monitoring my thoughts and that internal self-talk that's always going on for all of us, paying attention to it and realizing that I can choose different thoughts, which then influences my feelings, which then inspires my actions and eventually my results in my life. And I just can't overemphasize how powerful of an influence that was, and it led to a personal growth and personal development journey that I'm still on to this day. However, I still realize that some people struggle with this notion of their thoughts being separate from themselves. So here's an idea I want to run by you that can not only be playful and creative and fun, but it might be an effective way to view this whole topic and deal with it on a regular basis. 
And here it is. Treat your thoughts as if they were a candidate coming to you on a job interview. That's right. You are the boss, the CEO of You Incorporated, and you're putting together a team to help you live an empowered life. And these potential employees come to you in the form of various thoughts that you're thinking. And of course, you don't automatically hire everyone who walks in the door or every thought that walks in the door. You want to interview them. You want to acknowledge them, even spend a little time asking them questions. So you're not resisting your thoughts. You're not kicking them out the door and ignoring them because sometimes they have a helpful message. And not every thought is a negative one or one that is holding you back. Some thoughts that you have may actually serve you well. But it's the nature of human beings to often focus too much on negativity and what's wrong and why they can't do certain things and be certain types of people in their lives. So that's why I really like this idea of treating your thoughts as if they have arrived for a job interview. Now, if you're a performer, if you want to take a more creative spin on this, you could also treat your thoughts like they are auditioning for a play that you are producing. Maybe you're the playwright or the director, and potential actors and characters are coming in, and you take a look at them to decide if you want to cast them in your play So while you want to have an open mind, you don't want to hire or cast just any thought that walks in the door. You get to choose who is in your play. You get to choose who that mental team member is that's going to help your company succeed and flourish. So let me just remind you again that in this analogy of the audition or the job interview, you're not kicking these candidates out before they get to the door. You're not cursing at them. You're acknowledging them. You're asking questions. You're trying to evaluate how they fit into your personal team. But you will notice the more you do this, that many of your thoughts do not serve you. If you find yourself looking for reasons to be offended or looking for what's wrong with the situation, focusing too much on what you don't want instead of what you do want, those are the candidates that do not serve you. So when it comes to those disempowering thoughts, don't put them on the payroll. Don't hire them. Don't give them an executive suite. Or in the case of the theater production, don't cast them in your play. Because what many people do is they give these negative thoughts a microphone. They let them be the star of the play and have center stage. And that is not going to serve you in the long run, I guarantee. So I hope this way of looking at this topic was helpful. Have some fun with it. Be creative. And just make an effort every day throughout your day to monitor your thoughts. What type of conversation is going on in your head? Is it serving you? Or is it keeping you from being the person you know you are meant to be? That is the question. Borrow a line from Shakespeare. So that's one great way to detach from your thoughts and be the observer of your thoughts instead. I hope you found this helpful. I certainly enjoyed delivering this to you in this way. Have an amazing day. This is Bob Baker of BobBakerInspiration.com. Let's talk again soon. In the meantime, so long for now.